fine with pets and service animals, what to know and what not to do. Keep in mind that traveling by air with a pet can be a real pain. <laughs> you can fit your dog or cat in a, in a carrier under the seat, or if it is big, you have to ship the animal as cargo or check it as baggage. Either way, you must comply with multiple risks, restrictions, and hassles, not including the extra cash you must fork over. Also, setting your dog as baggage or freight can be even worse. Find out more. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous. Today, I want to talk to you about flying with pets and service animals, what to know and what not to do. Let's first define what a pet is. According to the United States Department of Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, a pet is a privately owned companion animal not intended for research or resale and includes the following animal groups only. So we have we have uh, a snapshot on the video for you so you can see it. So you have dogs, cats, ferrets, rabbits, rodents, hedgehog, tenrex, reptiles, amphibians, pet birds. Now the USDA is cautioning that not all birds qualify as pets. Multiple agencies, including USDA APHIS and U.S. Fish and Wild Service, Wildlife Service, may be involved in pet bird travel. It is critical, therefore, that your pet bird meets all applicable requirements before travel. Depending on the type of bird you have, APHIS regulations may vary due to the possibility of carrying or transmitting certain diseases to the U.S. poultry industry. Some pet birds are regulated as poultry. And must meet different requirements. Now, birds that are regulated as poultry include chickens, doves, ducks, geese, grouse, guinea fowl, partridges, peafowls, pheasants, pigeons, quail, swans, and turkeys. So, if your pet bird is listed above, it does not qualify for travel as a pet bird. You must meet specific import or export requirements for poultry. Visit the APHIS import and export website for live animals to learn more. Now let's talk about pets on board. So if your dog or cat is small enough to be comfortable in a pet carrier that fits under an airplane seat, you can take it with you in the cabin for, for a fee, of course. It's usually around 100 bucks or 150 Many airlines also allow rabbits and some household birds, but they don't let unaccompanied minors children under 18 travel with pets. Your pet will have to stay in the carrier throughout the flight and it will count as a carry-on bag. You can find out the exact measurements of the underseat space from the airline because some airlines are kind of spacious and some are not. So many airlines will rent or sell you a kennel that will fit. You, you want One thing that's very important if you are planning on traveling with pets, you want to make advanced reservations to bring your pet on board. Because most airlines will only allow a few animals in the cabin per flight and they make room on a first time, first serve basis. Also, you may not be able to sit in certain seats. That's one thing that a lot of people don't know about. But yeah, certain seats, if you are traveling with, with pets, you can't sit in all seats. So don't wait until the last minute and always check the airline's website for its rules on travel with animals. Now, if you have a disability, the rules are totally different. So, you, you know, the, the rules the rules for flying with service dogs and emotional support animals are totally different. They are more lenient. But either way, you want to call the the airline in advance, make reservation, talk to someone. Don't just send an email and hope that everything will be fine. You need to speak to a live person, get the person's name, have a reference number, and then plan your trip. All right. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are still talking today around flying with pets and service animals, what to know and what not to do. I want to talk to you now about international and interstate travel with pets. Many other countries, as well as the United States, as well as, well as U.S. states, have health requirements for bringing in animals. Consequently, you may not be able to bring your animal on board when you're traveling to those destinations, especially when there is a quarantine requirement. For example, in Hawaii, 
to find the health requirements in your destinations, you want to go to the APHIS website, the USDA.gov, www.usda.gov. And the, this is the, the official site of the United States Department of Agriculture. And they have a pet travel search tool. So when you're traveling international with a pet, it's always a great idea to check with the consulate or embassy of the country where you are headed. Now, we have, again, a great... So the APHIS website, we have a, we have gotten some screenshots that we're showing you here. And this is basically APHIS, the USDA APHIS telling people that not all animals qualify as pets. And this is important because you have to understand that as soon as you know your travel details, contact your local vet to assist with the pet travel process. Factors to consider may include meeting time frames for obtaining a health certificate, updating vaccinations, diagnostic testing, or administration of medications and treatment. So if you take your pet from the United States to a foreign country, in other words, you are exporting, your destination country may have specific health requirements that must be met before your pet can enter the country. Since export requirements are determined by each country and can change frequently, every time you plan you plan pet travel, you will need to verify the export requirements. Please note that airlines may have separate and additional requirements. So again, you want to go back and check with the airline. The process for taking a pet bird or other exotic animals out of the United States may involve multiple agencies, including USDA APHIS. As I said, they have a vet services there and you have the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services. So it is very important that you meet all requirements. Let, let's just scroll down a little bit here as you can see that again the when it comes to bringing so this was for export if you want to bring your pet out of the united states if you need to bring your pet into the united states from a foreign country the requirements are also different they might be even stringent so animals entering the united states may be subject to regulations by usda APHIS as well as other federal agencies Depending on your destination state, your pet may need to also meet additional health requirements. So here, if you go to the APHIS website, you, you, you there is a drop down menu. You click, you select the animal. So if the type of animal you're traveling with is not listed, you click on another link so you can see they have a, a long list, a wide array of animals. And I'm sure your animals, your animal, will, your pet will be on that list. So if you travel with your pet state to state, this is what the authority is called interstate so if you want to learn more about the requirements when traveling from state to state you have to go to again to the you have to contact your state veterinarian's office in the destin in the destination state to learn more now the authorities are very very clear about one type of pet one category of pets we're talking here about reptiles so pet travel bringing reptiles into the United States. So here we have another snapshot taken out of the USDA APHIS website. And the update is as of June 2nd, 2020. So it's very, it's very, very recent. That's the latest. And um, th the thing here is that those animals require extra caution. Therefore, USDA APHIS veterinary vet services does not have any animal health requirements related to bringing importing a reptile to the United States from a foreign country. However, there are a few tortoises that VS pro prohibits from being imported. The following tortoise species are not allowed to be imported in the United States. So you have the leopard tur tortoise, the African spur tortoise, and the Bell's hinchback tortoise. The Centers for Disease Control CDC does not regulate the import of reptiles except turtles, tortoises, and terrapins so you want to visit if you have more question or more more you know you need more clarification it's always good to go to the cdc's website to view the to view the imports requirements related to these animals also you want to check the u.s fish and wildlife service as they may have regulations related to importing a reptile in the united states remember though that you know we are a union so we have 50 states you may have additional state requirements. So when available, you will find additional information about bringing a reptile into a particular state on that state's Department of, of Agriculture website. If information about traveling with the reptile is not found on this site, you should contact the State Department of Agriculture of the state 
veterinarian's office in your destination state directly to determine if there are any import requirements. So the thing here is that you have to understand the bottom line is it is the responsibility of the pet owner to make sure their pet has met the entry requirements of the United States because failure to meet these import requirements will result in problems upon arrival in the US and the pet may be refused entry. Various agencies may have regulatory authority over your pet when it enters the United States. It is important, therefore, to notify and coordinate with all responsible government agencies. So if you need, the great thing is that they actually have a phone number here. So if you need clarification of the entry requirements, you can contact the National Import and Export Services by phone at 301-851-3300. So 301 851 3300. We've tried them out and they were very, very responsive. All right, I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're also having a conversation today around uh, flying with pets and service animals what to know and what not to do. So, if you love the content's clarity and quality so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you are aware whenever we drop a new show. And we release shows like this one every single day, rain or shine. Not just about traveling with pets, but uh, we cover a wide variety of topics. I just want to talk to you and also, if you have com if you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. And if you would go ahead and live and like this content, we we'll really appreciate that and don't forget share let's talk about checking pets as baggage so if your pet can't come in the cabin with you some airlines will allow you to put it on the same flight as checked baggage the fees vary we've seen fees from uh, 100 bucks to 800 bucks depending upon the, the animal here again you need to give the airline advance notice and check for specific rules here i'm talking about carrier and identification requirements breed bands limits on the animal size and age, seasonal restrictions, as well as destinations where pets can go and baggage, requirements for food and water on long flights, health certificates, and approval from a vet for any sedation. So a lot can go wrong when pets become baggage. Think about it. For example, even though animals usually kept in a pressurized cargo area with temperature control, the temperature can fluctuate dramatically if the plane is delayed on the ground. Just as airlines routinely displace baggage, pets can get lost or left behind during a stopover. So obviously the results are worse for a terrified, thirsty, and hungry animal than for a suitcase full of clothes. Right? We also have another risk here. Animals can be hurt or killed when carriers are tipped or crushed during transport. So this is things you have to be aware of when you want to check your your pet as baggage shipping pets as air cargo that's another possibility you may have to consider shipping your pet as air cargo if the other options aren't available to you now this is very expensive and we've seen it a lot of the shakes in in dubai in the middle east they do this a lot because they have the money so if you have the budget for it go ahead there are restrictions and drawbacks of checking your pet as, as baggage. So you might want to ship it as, as air cargo if you have the means for it. The same preparations and precautions apply as well. Now, let me give you a few tips for avoiding problems. So when you want to send your pet as baggage or cargo, you can take some steps to help prevent mishaps. Let me just and and, and this it's all about preparation planning. So book a non-stop flight on an airline and route with a good a good one-time record avoid traveling at times when it will be too hot or cold you want to talk to a flight attendant for confirmation from the baggage handlers that the dog or a cat is on board and you want to talk specifically to the baggage people yourself if there is an extended delay ask that the dog be taken off the plane you want to be persistent albeit polite be courteous everybody understand people love pets so people will try to work with you if you are polite you want also to get an approved an approved crate right you want to get that in advance an approved crate that complies with the united states department of, of agricultural requirement for size and constructions and you want to give your pet time to get used to being inside 
A lot of airline websites will provide details on crate specifications. Now, your dog, for example, should be wearing an, an ID tag. This is important with your contact information and destination. You, sh you also want to attach a tag on the carrier with your name, contact info, and any special instructions. The bottom line is the bottom line is you want to be notified and notifiable ASAP as soon as there is a problem or as soon as there is something happening. Don't feed your animal for four hours before the flight, but you can give it water right up to the travel time. Leave food and dishes in the crate along with instructions so that airline employees can feed and water your pet if there's a long delay or extended layover. Another thing that is important is that you want to think about insurance because you never know. So you want to get adequate liability coverage for your dog from the airline or an outside carrier. Note that airlines have limits on liability insurance for baggage, but you should be able to declare a higher value with a higher fee, of course. All right. So this is basically it. I'm just uh, wrapping up today's conversation. I was talking to you today about flying with pets and service animals, what to do, what to know rather, and what not to do. So we covered definition of a pet, what qualifies as a pet, pets on board, international and interstate travel with pets, checking, checking pets as baggage, shipping pets as air cargo, and tips for avoiding problems when traveling with uh, pets. I will see you next time, but until then, remember, stay marvelous. <laughs>